Well, of course, we had a park here prior to this that was one of the top parks in the, in the state, actually. Uh, it was dated, it was probably close to 20 years old. So it was time to kind of outdo what we had before. This park has been a, a culmination of many, many meetings uh, to decide, you know, what's going to work, what's not going to work. Uh, I can't thank uh, City Council enough for providing the money to be able to do something like this. It's a huge undertaking. One of the best things about being involved in the community um, is to have an opportunity to listen to what people are interested in, what the needs are of the community, how to make you know, your experience even better. And that's what the Art Street Park Inclusive Playground does for our children and our families. So we basically just picked what kind of equipment was in there. So like, for instance, like the teeter-totter and then just the basic layout of everything. I was a part of the committee uh, to put the park together here in Lawrenceburg. Um, and this park, while we were designing it, it was important that it was inclusive uh, to all children um, with any type of handicaps or disabilities. Um, that meant a lot to us because we have a daughter who has a trach and sometimes has events. We were looking for something that would help her with development skills um, and help other uh, people in the community as well and children. Um, so some of the things that I helped advocate for here were things that her therapist uh, recommended and um, things like the music therapy or uh, sensory items that are part of the playground. Uh, and that meant a lot to us and hopefully it means a lot to other community members as well. This park to me is uh, really a step forward, you know, not only in our city, but you know, really kind of society as a whole and integrating its playgrounds to be as inclusive as possible. And that means a lot to me because I'm a C56 quadriplegic and I've been wheelchair bound since I've been 15. And uh, we didn't have parts like this when I was a kid. We didn't have parts like this when I was injured. And uh, I think it would have meant a lot to me to have a park like this growing up. The city of Lawrenceburg is a community dedicating to supporting exceptional recreational outlets and quality of place environments in Dearborn County, Indiana. For more information, visit thinklawrenceburg.com. Well, thank you for coming. That's it. You can go home. Anyway, um, no, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and welcome to the 2022 State of the City Address. I want to get to some heartfelt thank yous and appreciation comments out uh, before we get started here. First of all, thank you to the Event Center for allowing us to use this facility today. Also, a huge thank you to Communications Director uh, Guinevere Bunchbach for taking care of all the preparations. A thank you to all of you that are in attendance and those who are joining us by way of live streaming. And especially thank you to my family and my wife Jody for supporting me and allowing me to do the, 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 most, the, the most wonderful job I've ever had. It really is. Okay, the city of Lawrenceburg is a community dedicated to improving the lives of our residents with a focus on education, economic development, and quality of life. The same three pillars that I've been focused on since 2016 when I first became mayor. While tri-state metropolitan cities often take center stage, smaller cities such as Lawrenceburg have a culture of vibrancy and uniqueness all of our own. We always want to maintain our small town feel but offer the big city amenities. We want to always strive to magnify Lawrenceburg and in a positive light for all to see. The 2022 State of the City Address today will share many positive and exciting outlooks. Let's take a look back at 2021 as we look at a year in review. And then we're going to discuss where we are today and our vision ahead. The first thing I want to say about 2021 is we lost a, a couple of very special men here in the city. Um, previous Bear, uh, Mayor Bill Cunningham and previous Mayor Don Combs were very instrumental during their years leading this city and making it what it is today. We thank them for their service to our community and want to keep their families in our thoughts and prayers. Now let's talk about a little bit about progress. Obviously COVID tried to rear its ugly head again, but the resiliency, re resiliency and commitment of our city employees kept the city moving and operating. 
I'm going to list a number of items that we accomplished during this past year, but in respect of your time, uh, I'm going to be brief in my narrative regarding each accomplishment on a timeline. First off, we, we adopted a new comprehensive plan this year with key focus areas that included the downtown riverfront, US 50 corridor, and a Ludlow Hill master plan. A couple of key notations from the plan includes better utilization of the Lawrenceburg riverfront, which you hear more about later, more affordable housing, more senior housing, and it increased the percentage of owner-occupied housing throughout the city. We received $564,000 this year from the American Rescue Plan funds. These were federal funds that were given to the states and then dispersed to the cities, towns, and counties. There were certain spending parameters that we had to follow, but what we decided to do here in the city is the following. We allotted $260,000 to do a one month utility assistance plan for all of our residential customers. We also had 53 small businesses that received grants from the city of Lawrenceburg to help them continue to grow local. We were able to provide a small stipend for our city employees to reward them for the unprecedented work that was performed during COVID and all those months and obviously the previous year. Another great highlight from 2021 was we had 29 new business licenses that were awarded in the city. Eight of those alone were downtown. Lawrenceburg Main Street, in partnership with the City of Lawrenceburg and Lawrenceburg Redevelopment Commission, they distributed $287,000 in public grants combined with $621,000 of private investment throughout the implementation of eight different grant programs that we offer. We had over 100 premier events take place last year in the city, such as Music on the River concert series, the Lawrenceburg Summer Event Series featuring the Taste of Summer and Kids Day, Whiskey City Challenge Bike Race, Whiskey City Summer, Summer Fest, and the Lawrenceburg Fall Music Fest plus numerous Winter Wonderland events. For a city our size, that is quite a feat to provide that many events and to pull those off. We estimate that attendance was in excess of 60,000 people with the premise of getting foot traffic downtown so our restaurants and our small businesses will continue to thrive. Thank you to Michelle Cohn and her staff, City Redevelopment Director Brian Messmore and his staff, in addition to the many city employees and volunteers for a job well done. We also finished phase one of the old State Route 48 slip project. We finished it early and under budget. Phase two will be done this year. We did this with the, uh, the Community Crossings grant money totaling about $1.8 million. We finished the final stage of getting fiber to all of our residents here in the city. So a little commercial for the Lawrenceburg Broadband Communications before I go on. If you don't have our Wi-Fi, please, get, please go to thinklawrenceburg.com and give us a call. We're, we're accepting new, uh, new people. We also continue to upgrade our state-of-the-art data center. If you're not familiar with the data center, it's located over on Front Street. And uh, what we're able to do by, by continuing to update that is reduce our third-party costs and give it, it also gives us the ability to create a revenue stream for the future. We saw a need and hired an IT director for the city this past year. Mr. Bryson Walkie has been a great addition to our team and is paying dividends not only with his knowledge, but also cost savings ideas as well. In 2021, the Lawrenceburg Civic Park won an International Downtown Achievement Award and a community award for the custom holiday, light, holiday lights display. If you didn't get to enjoy the light display this year, you really missed it. I urge you to get there next year, it's quite impressive. We started a complete renovation of the Lawrenceburg Community Center this year. The city took over the day-to-day -day operations of the center and Richard Richardson and his staff are rejuvenating the center with new programming and opportunities for our kids and our adults. We are finishing up installing new flooring, a new computer lab, uh, new games, new painting, 
and other things down at the center. Many new things to come on the horizon for that establishment. Please check it out. We also invested over $740,000 in a complete playground replacement at Arch Street Park, which included multi-generational inclusive equipment, as you've seen in the, the slide presentation prior to, to me speaking. Our River Cities Bike Share Program celebrated their five-year anniversary in 2021. 3,442 users, over $41,000 collected in rental fees since the inception in 2017. When we first started that, that program with Aurora, um, we really thought that it was going to be uh, something we were going to have to budget for it each year to help uh, continue the, the program. And from year one, it was, it's been able to pay for all of it, its upkeep, any kind of maintenance done on bicycles, and any new bicycles we needed to, uh, to purchase. Uh, it's become a, a, a huge hit here in the city. People that stay here at the hotel uh, come to me all the time, and, and they're just thrilled that we have that as an op opportunity for them to uh, utilize. What I just covered here in 2021 are just some highlights of the past year. Many, many more smaller projects and items got completed and our folks did it very, very safely. Thank you to Mr. Mike Abden for keeping safety at the forefront in the city of Lawrenceburg. Mike is our safety director and uh, does a wonderful job here with both our employees and our contractors. You know, all I can say is about 2021 was, wow, what a year, right? You know, now you ask, you know, what can we possibly do in 2022, right? I mean, we've got, I, I think we've, we've come a long way in well, going on the seven, seven short years. Uh, if you would have asked me or any of my staff that has been with me since 2016, we would have never guessed that our vision would have been as far along as it is today. And uh, that's a tribute to really everyone in this room my city employees, my staff, everybody that supports the city of Lawrenceburg, our businesses, and, and, it, and I can go on and on. And I don't want to miss anyone, but uh, it, it's been a, a, a truly a team effort. Here's what's, what we got looking for for 2022, and I think you're going to be really excited as, as we are and, and I know my council is. We are currently in discussions and planning for a complete overhaul of our docks and riverfront at the end of Walnut Street, right behind us. More space, more restaurant opportunities on the water, ease of access, and an overall destination for boaters and pedestrians and visitors. We will share what the conceptual outlook will be looking like very soon. Council is putting their final touches on the project, and it will be something I, I'm sure that we'll all be proud of. Stay tuned for this one. I can't share a lot yet because it's not extremely public, but uh, just so you know that uh, we will get the concept out for everyone to see very soon, as soon as uh, council uh, gets a, an opportunity to meet with the engineering firms again. Whiskey River Apartments. Everybody has been hearing me, hearing me talk about that for a couple years now. They will be welcoming folks starting on April 25th. I'm told that the pre-move-in lease, uh, leases are exceeding their expectations, somewhere around a 30% mark already in, occup in, in occupancy starting up. You've heard me get excited about this project for, for a while. This will bring another 200 to 250 people to the downtown to enjoy our restaurants and small businesses. In 2022, we will also be launching a complete revamp of our city recycling effort. Much more information will be coming out in the upcoming weeks and months. We will ensure that community is aware of all the changes in a very timely manner. We have a very capable committee working on this project with hopes to roll it out later on sometime this year. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's something that we've been wanting to do for quite some time and we just feel like the time is right to to start that program. Let me talk a little bit about the CARE initiative. CARE uh, stands for Community Action Recovery Effort. This is something we started about three and a half, four years ago. 
and it was a, a, a culmination of, or let me put it this way, it, it was a collaboration of many people uh, that deal with substance uh, abuse disorder on a daily basis, okay? They're, they're the experts. And what we did was we gathered everybody and we got them in a room and then we had a consultant help us to identify the gaps we have here in our county and in our city. And we have moved forward from that, from day one, and a lot of, a lot of good work has been done in that. Anyone is able to join the initiative, and I urge you all to do that. But the, the thing is, is uh, we thought that one of our long-term uh, goals that came out of the consultant was gonna be to find a building for a recovery hub. What's a recovery hub? Recovery hub is a place where we, we hope can be as close to a one-stop one shop for people that are in recovery uh, that, to where they can stop and get the, the necessary um, uh, agencies and, and such to be able to talk to them. So, because the one thing that I've, I've heard from people in recovery is one of the, the, the hardest things after you know, they get out of incarceration or they're, they get out of rehab or whatever, most of the time they don't have a license. They can't get from here to there. Um, obviously, we've, we've done some work uh, with a transportation group uh, where catch -a ride has really stepped up for us uh, to try and get people from, from appointment to appointment. But this hub is gonna be an opportunity for people to get to as many agencies as they can in one stop. And uh, the, thing, the reason I'm bringing it up now is this is a building that's located on Industrial Drive over here in Lawrenceburg, and it's going to be a great addition to the recovery community. Uh, community Mental Health has stepped up and agreed to sign on to manage the building, and that paperwork has been completed. And I just want to share that a lot more information about the hub and including the CARE initiative will be coming out uh, shortly. We're also looking at uh, how to get ease of access to the Ludlow Hill Park for area residents up on the hill. We had really originally looked at a sidewalk project on State Route 48, but very early in the engineering phase, it was advised to us that it was going to be a very difficult, if not impossible, thing to do. Um, so what are, we, what are we doing to, to solve that? So we're now looking at creating a separate walkable entrance from any of the, some of the surrounding uh, neighborhoods. This is a beautiful park with recent renovations and we want as many people on Ludlow Hill to be able to enjoy this amenity. We have improve, improvements coming for the Tanner's Creek boat docks that include additional docks and other improvements. Um, that is going to be, we're also working on a, uh, 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 with a DNR and, and such on how to remove the silt down there for our new dock so we can uh, better utilize uh, both uh, uh, ramps. So uh, but we're also gonna be adding additional dock space. So those, those of you that are boaters know that when you're waiting to come in on Tanner's Creek, there's not enough dock space to, to pull up to. So uh, that's one thing that we, we are gonna be adding down there and, and we hope to get that done this year as well. We have an improvement project also in the budget for the Lawrenceburg Skate Park. Uh, if you're not familiar with the skate park, it's located where the old Durban Plaza used to be, uh, near the Durban Bowl. And uh, it's in need of some, some upgrades. So we're going to work with local folks, uh, such as Joe Hughes, who runs Blacklist here in town, and uh, see what we need to do to uh, in improve that, that experience for those folks that are skaters. I don't think that I'll be doing that anytime soon, but, uh, but I know we've got a lot of people, a lot of young, young adults and, and kids that are really into that sport. You know, this is an aggressive lift, list of projects just for 2022, but we are committed to always improving the quality of life of our residents and for our visitors. So let me tell you in, in conclusion, I want to stand in front of you today and let everybody know that Lawrenceburg is financially strong. We are poised for success and your elected officials are working together in continued cohesiveness. I want to thank you all for your attendance today. This is the fun part for me, folks. I, I get to stand up here and, 
and tell everybody how great things are, uh, are in the city of Lawrenceburg. But what I don't take for granted is our continued efforts of our business owners to think local, grow local. What I don't take for granted is the many hours of hard work of many of our volunteer boards here in the city, such as Redevelopment, Planning Commission, Historic Preservation Board, BZA, and the countless folks who step up to help us move forward. What is not taken for granted is the work ethic and commitment of our city employees and our elected officials to make Lawrenceburg truly a city on the rise. It really does take a village to do this, and uh, I, I think I've got some of the best people that I've ever come across in the state working for me and working with me. I want to thank you all for coming out today, and I really want to thank you for your continued support. So, go Bengals. My brother Kevin is buying dinner over at Strong's. I do want to say one more thing, off the record, so to speak. We've invited the, the young adults the, uh, over from the high school every year to our state of the city. And every year, Mr. Schneider has, has brought folks over here. And, and I, I want them to know that, you know, what we, we, th we strive to do here is to f make this a place where you're going to want to come back to. Because a lot of you will maybe go off to college, go off to the service, or maybe just move away, get married, whatever. But we always want to provide a place for our, our kids to want to come back to. I'm very fortunate. Jody and I are very fortunate. All of our kids are back here now. All of our grandkids are here. Uh, and we hope they don't ever leave. Not everybody's that fortunate. But we, that, that's our, 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 one of our major goals here. Um, and councils mentioned it many times. We want to provide an uh, opportunity for our kids to, to, to come back to a place where they can call home and, and raise their family. So I should have probably included that, but it was off the cuff. <laughs> <laughs>